In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Mont Blanc 149 Calligraphy Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. Here we have the Mont Blanc 149 Calligraphy Fountain Pen. This is a pen that I believe was released a couple of years ago. I completely missed the boat on it by the time that I recognized or realized that they made this pen. It was not available, but I saw earlier this year these start to show up in European Mont Blanc 80s, so I went for it because I was worried I wouldn't be able to get one again. So this pen is not the one that you're used to seeing on my channel, which is this 1970s model. As you can tell, really hasn't changed too much from the 50s when the one 149 was released. I'll go over some of the, the differences. There definitely are differences, and I'm already getting confused which one is which. <laughs> Um, but let's walk through the pen. So this pen is also known as the Diplomat. The one that's one size smaller than this is known as the Legrand. I don't know why Mont Blanc doesn't call this the Diplomat anymore. This pen, in my opinion, has better proportions than the 146 and the 144 and 145. Now, I used to have the old 146, one from the 1950s, and it actually more resembles the shape of this pen. The new one is more elongated, and I just don't think the proportions look as good. However, this pen maintains those original 1950s proportions, and I think it's the best looking pen uh, in the Mont Blanc Meisterstück line. This is the iconic torpedo shape of the Meisterstück line. It's a cigar-shaped pen. It's a big, fat, oversized pen. It's one of my personal favorites. You know, I had that 1970s one for, I think, over, or probably right around 10 years now, and I just, I use it all the time. It's super nice. Now, in terms of design, we have the typical Mont Blanc snow cap here, or the mountain top for which the company is named after. Uh, we have a gold ring here. We can see a serial number, which is sort of laser engraved here. And then underneath the clip, you're not really going to be able to see it, but it says metal and Germany. And then on the cap ring, we're going to see Meisterstück, one for nine. Meisterstück means masterpiece in German. And actually the old American Meisterstücks actually just said masterpiece instead of the German, but I don't know. They did that for branding reasons or because it's cheaper to just make one pen. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because it's cheaper. Those older 149s, in my opinion, are made better. They were more complicated, but it doesn't mean that these new ones aren't amazing. I think they are. Now, two rings here, just to show you a little difference here. If you look at the quality of the engraving on this one that I'm turning here, which is the 1970s model, you can see it's deeper. It looks, I think, nicer, more crisp, whereas this is lighter, not as nice. Now, it's not a big deal. You also notice I think that the cap rings are a little bit closer together on the older one. Really small differences. But if you compared a 1950s 149 to my 1970s one, that one would be even nicer. So they got cheaper over the years, and that's unfortunate because this is a really expensive pen. I think this is just under $1,100 for the one with the calligraphy nib. I believe the one with a standard nib is under 1000 but that's very expensive for a plastic pen. Now, you can see this is the, the nib grade, which is kind of funny on these pens. That's just the symbol of the calligraphy nib normally would say F or M or OB or something like that. Okay, now here we have a ink window, which has all these little lines in there. And you can see this is almost out of ink. Some threading here, and then a big fat, but somewhat short grip section, and then sort of a textured metal, or not metal, sorry, plastic end piece here. This is one of the, the fattest grip sections. Pretty sure this is actually the fattest that I have. Now there are huge pens, Danny Trios, Namiki Emperors that are bigger than this, but for what I would consider the, you know, normal oversized pens, this is actually the fattest. I would consider these three pens sort of competitors. Now, all of these pens are around $1,000. The standard Pelican Souverine uh, one, M1000 is the only one that I think is over a thousand. Now this in the calligraphy format is over a thousand, but the standard, you know, basic plastic Sailor King of Pen is under a thousand, just like the standard 149. So these are all oversized pens. They all have big 
nibs, but you'll notice if you look, the Mont Blanc 149 has the fattest grip section. And I think that's part of what makes it the most comfortable pen. I tend to think the Pelican for whatever reason is the least comfortable, but they're all very comfortable pens. This is just, I think, one of the most comfortable, and it's down to that big grip section. Now, the older versions, like my 1970s model and the 1950s model, were lighter weight than this pen. They didn't have these big metal pieces in the piston filling system, so those old ones were, I would say, even more comfortable because they weren't top-heavy. They didn't have a big weight in the back of the pen, but I still think this is one of the most comfortable pens you can buy. Definitely the most comfortable Mont Blanc pen that you can buy today, at least that I've tried. And I have had the 146 Le Grand. I've had the 144. I don't think I've had a 145 just yet. But anyway, this is the calligraphy nib. And if you will notice, it is dirty around the tines. And that is something that just happens when you write with this pen. The ink comes out and gets onto the nib, which is not something that happens with a normal 149, but it seems to be something that is common with flex nibs. My Aurora flex nib does that. And you know, my vintage Omas Ojiva, which has a very, very flexible nib, also does this. So it's just kind of part of the deal with a flexible nib. Now you can see in terms of the design, we have this flexing line basically on there and then 1410 or 4810 is I believe the peak of Mont Blanc in meters. And then at the end here we can see it says Mont Blanc 18K AU 750 because it's 18 karat gold. Plastic feed as far as I can tell, this is the, just the exact same feed that is on a normal 149 nib. This nib supposedly takes 39 steps to make. I don't know how many steps a normal one takes, but they say that that is special, so I'm assuming it's more than normal. I'll just show the nib compared to a normal one. Now, the nib that I'm showing here, unfortunately, this nib from the 1970s, I sent it to Mont Blanc for service, and they basically polished off all of the silver rhodium plating or whatever they used in the 70s. But anyway, this is still like the same shape as the current modern 18 karat gold nib. Uh, you would just normally have it be a two-tone instead of a one-tone. I think that the standard 149 nib is a prettier nib shape than the calligraphy one. I also just, the overall design of it with the two-tone is prettier than this calligraphy nib one. I don't find this nib to be particularly attractive. I do think that the shape of it is quite interesting. Normally for a flexible nib, I would expect the tines to be longer and narrower, but that really isn't the case on this nib. So let's do some measurements here. So looking at about 148, I would say, millimeters, and then unposts or uncapped rather were about 132, 133. And posted, you can definitely post this pen. I will be posting mine. I know it's an expensive pen and it's made out of a very precious plastic, but this is a pen that's designed to be used and I think it should be used. About 168, I would say. So it's a pretty long pen, but I do find it to be very comfortable. Now in terms of the grip section, it's a pretty straight grip section. It does, I think, taper slightly, but let's confirm that. So just above the threading here, 13.7, so that's very fat. And then just below this collar here, 12.8. So it does taper about a millimeter. Pretty straight, very comfortable pen uh, to hold. Now in terms of weight, and this is pretty much very close to being empty, 32 grams. It feels heavier than that. I think it feels heavier because all the weight on this pen and the body is back here where the piston threads are. So to, to fill this, it's a, a piston filler. You unscrew this and plunger comes down and you'll see it sort of step off the back here. Okay, let's do the writing sample. I'm gonna be doing this writing sample on a paper mined Mitsubishi bank paper notebook. This is my company. It's my personal favorite paper to write on for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers. I'm giving 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. Now I've done paper tests on each side of this, so sorry about that, but I'm running out of pages here, so let's, don't wanna waste paper. Okay, this is a Mont Blanc 149 calligraphy nib, and um, this is Mont Blanc Burgundy. Okay. Let's 
Try fast writing. This is something I'm pretty confident this pen does not like. Yeah, so we're getting lots of skips here. That has pretty much been my experience with this pen. This pen does have sensitivity to different inks more than most of my pens. So finding a right ink combination is definitely worth pursuing if you have one of these pens. You know, it's really not designed to be written with fast. I even do get some skips in just regular writing with this pen. and and with this ink combination that I'm currently using. You know, it's just, I don't know why it doesn't like that, but it doesn't. Using this pen as an everyday writer, it's pretty good f for that. Is it the best performer? I would say no. What this likes is slow writing. I've seen lots of different types of, you know, calligraphy styles that you can actually achieve with this pen, which is pretty impressive. I am not a calligrapher, uh, so I'm not going to be able to show you too much with that, but I will just show you some of the flexibility that you can get out of this. You do get quite, you can get quite a fine line and a quite a long or wide line rather, um, but it does railroad. And you know, for calligraphy, you write slowly, and for that purpose, I think it can do it. Um, you know, I am can kind of do some italic, but that's not particularly good. So. And that's looking pretty poor, but you get the idea. You do get some nice you know, thin to wide stri uh, strokes. So I really actually do like this nib. Out of all of the modern flex nibs, definitely in quotes with that, this, in my opinion, is the best. If you want to do calligraphy, I, I really do think that this is, Mont Blanc has done an amazing job with this nib. Let's do reverse writing. Sorry, I forgot about that. I don't know why you would do that, but doesn't like it. We're losing... Not that smooth either. One thing I, w I will say about this nib also is on certain types of paper, not paper like this, which is quite dense, but certain papers, it does kind of tend to cut into the paper a little bit, or it can, something to be aware of. So what are my pros and cons for the Mont Blanc 149 calligraphy fountain pen? The biggest pro is definitely this calligraphy or flexible nib. And out of like the modern, you know, quote unquote, flexible nibs, out of that class of nibs, uh, I do think that this 149 is one of, or this 149 calligraphy nib is one of the best. It is, it writes with a very fine point and you can get it to go pretty wide and there's a good spring back, probably the best spring back of any of the modern, quote unquote, flexible fountain pen nibs out there. So they did a really good job with that. The one for nine is also my favorite Mont Blanc fountain pen. It's just, it's the most comfortable size. It has this huge thick grip section. I absolutely love it. I've had my old 1970s 149, this one, and look at how similar they are. <laughs> uh, I've had this one for, I think, right around 10 years, and it's always on my desk. It's always, pretty much always inked. I just absolutely love this pen. It's so comfortable and they're so nice to write with. In terms of cons, well, as an everyday writer, I'm not 100% sold that this calligraphy flexible nib is the best for that. I do occasionally have issues with skipping. This is a nib that likes to be written with slowly as you would do for most types of calligraphy. You write slowly and that's what this pen does really nicely and very well. Other things, well, it's very expensive. It's like $1,100, something like that. 
that's a ton of money. It's about $100 more than the standard 149. Whether that's worth it to you or not, what I would say is if you want a 149 and you're not interested in the calligraphy nib, uh, buy a used one. You know, they've been making this pen since the 1950s, and you can still buy those amazing 1950s versions. Those are quite expensive, but you know, you get ones from like the 70s up until the 90s, 2000s. You can get a 149 for $500 or less. And that for that price, it's an awesome pen. Really, really excellent if you want a premium Mont Blanc fountain pen. I, I highly recommend these. What else can I say? Well, other cons, I don't think that the nib is particularly attractive looking. I don't think that the shape of it compared to the normal shape is that good looking. I think the normal 149 nib is a better looking nib. These modern 149s have brass threading on the blind cap here, and that unfortunately makes it a little bit more back weighted. So compared to the older ones that were using plastic threading or even older than that were using a what was called a telescopic system that didn't have metal back there, it's a little bit less comfortable. It's, you know, the weight is a little bit more noticeable. Um, that is an unfortunate uh, thing that they did to these pens, but that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.